Hello, I'm Holly and today I'm going to be doing my April wrap up. April ended up being a great reading month for me. It was the Magical Readathon, which is a month long readathon hosted by G at Book Roast. And I think that really gave me the push to kind of read more than I have in any other month this year. So in April, I read nine books, which worked out at 2,875 pages. This worked out at 96 pages per day an average book length of 319 pages. And in my wrap ups going forward, I also wanted to include a statistic about how long these books have been on my TBR. I saw this on Meg with Books' channel and I thought it was a really interesting way to see whether I'm prioritizing maybe the older books on my TBR or just picking up, you know, the shiny new ones that I've just bought. So in April, the average time on my TBR was 10 to 11 months. I think it was like 10.9, so 11 months. And then in Star Race, Ratings. This is very indicative of my year so far. So I had two three stars, three 3.5 stars, two four stars and two 4.5 stars. So good ratings, but I haven't been getting any five stars, haven't been getting any like two stars or less, which I guess is great, but I would like some new favourites. And that ended up working out as an average star rating of 3.7. In format, I read seven physical books, one ebook and one mixed media. That means that I read it in multiple formats. In this case it was the physical and the audiobook at the same time. In age category I read nine adult books. In genre I read four fantasy, one poetry, one paranormal, one sci-fi, one non-fiction and one historical fiction quite a mix. In terms of author status, eight books were from new to me authors, one was from an author I had read before. In terms of where I sourced my books, eight of them were from my own TBR that predated 2022 and then one was from Scribd. And then finally I also want to track whether the books I'm reading are part of a series and like what kind of book they are in the series. So I ended up reading five standalones, three starts of series and then one end of series. I I would really like to finish more series this year so I know I started three more but I did finish one and I'm proud of that. Okay then, so now it's time to get into the books I read. And I think going forward, I've seen a few people do this and I quite like it, ranking them. So starting with my least favorite and working up to my favorite of the month. Unfortunately, my least favorite book of April was Helium by Rudy Francisco. This is a poetry collection and it's looking at themes of identity, family, relationships, that kind of thing. And while there were some really great poems in here, some really poignant lines. I think reading this just kind of solidified my thought that poetry isn't really my thing. I think personally it's just a bit too fleeting for me to get my teeth into it and to really enjoy it. So even though this was a fantastic collection I think if you love poetry I would definitely recommend this one. There's loads of like good rhythm and sound. It just wasn't for me unfortunately and that's why it's at the bottom of the list. It was still a three star. I did still have a good time reading it. It was just not that memorable to me personally. The next book was also a three star and that is The Shadow Courtesan by Willow Woods. This is an independently published paranormal historical kind of story and it follows this girl, Raina, who I think it might be the 1800s or the 1900s. She is kidnapped from her village. Her village is destroyed by this like group of vampires and she ends up getting taken to this place called Tenebrae, which is this vampire-run compound, and humans are really just used for food and for slave labour. The head vampire has a number of courtesans, so you might be able to guess where this story goes. So this book was a bit of an enigma for me because there was quite a few things in this that I didn't like. First of all, I felt that it was very unbelievable. The characters seemed to make very stupid decisions and the relationships didn't seem to build naturally for me. There is a huge time jump in this. There's like two parts to this. And a lot happened within that time jump that you don't get to see. And I think it would have been nice to see the progression of a particular relationship. 
In terms of characters, I also really struggled with our main character. She felt very whiny and annoying. And again, her actions didn't feel very believable. She would just flip flop back and forth. She would say, I'm not doing this. And then like 10 pages later, she would do it. Personally, I also would have enjoyed a little bit more darkness. Obviously there are dark themes in this, like slavery, vampires, there's blood drinking, stuff like that. But I almost wanted it to go just that little bit further. Even though I said all those things that I didn't enjoy, I did actually enjoy a lot of this book. I was very compelled, very intrigued. I had to keep reading. I read most of this. It's not, it's quite a short book, but I read most of this in I think about two sittings. And when I'd finished it, I kept having like vampire dreams. So it obviously had impacted me a bit. And I think the main thing that kept me going was the world in this. It actually was quite well developed. There was this whole system and hierarchy of the vampires. And I think the world itself was brilliant, but the characters maybe let it down a bit and the illogical behaviour. So overall it ended up being a three star. The next book is Sleeping Giants by Sylvain Nouvelle and I gave this one 3.5 stars. This is a sci-fi and at the beginning you're introduced to this girl who ends up falling into this hole and she's on this big metal hand and then later on you're also following her when she is an adult she's become a scientist and she ends up working on this project they're trying to find out what this hand is could there be other pieces is it aliens and this was a really fun read it's written in a very interesting format in that it's written in interviews and I think there are a couple of documents in there as well and that made it an incredibly fast-paced read. It was thrilling in parts. The characters were actually quite compelling, especially the narrator who is unnamed. You don't really know what his deal is and I felt that created intrigue throughout but it was only a 3.5 for me and I think that did have something to do with the format. As much as it was fun and fast paced, it almost felt a little too fast paced for me in that we're covering huge periods of time in a couple of pages and that created a bit of distance between me and the story even though the characters were compelling and when things happened to them later on in the book I was like oh no and I just wanted them to succeed but I did feel a little disconnected with the story. I'm definitely going to continue in this series because I'm interested to see how the story progresses from the ending of this one, but it ended up just being a good read for me, nothing special. Then we have a historical fiction and that was Lovely War by Julie Berry. This is one that I have been excited to get to for a long time. So you're following some of the Greek gods, you're following Aphrodite and Ares and Hephaestus, is that how you say his name? A couple of others kind of pop in along the way and Aphrodite has been found with her lover Ares by her husband and he puts her on trial and she's trying to prove that love and war, she's obviously the goddess of love, Ares is the god of war, she's trying to prove that love and war just work together and to do this she recounts a couple of love stories throughout the first world war maybe the Second World War. So although you do have that Greek god twist, the majority of this book is following those love stories. While I did enjoy this one, I'm not entirely sure if war fiction is really my thing anymore. I read a lot of it when I was younger and watched a lot of TV shows and films that had that war theme and I think I'm a little bit fatigued. I just wasn't completely captivated with this story. I know that a lot of people have loved this one but it was just okay for me. Then we have a bit of a disappointing read for me and that was Blood of Dragons by Robin Hobb. This is the third book in the Rain Wild Chronicles trilogy and it probably is one of my least favourite Robin Hobbs. I gave it 3.5 stars so it was still a good read, there were still lots of bits in this that I enjoyed. I love the characters, I love Robin Hobbs writing, I love the world that she's created, it's so expansive. I love the magic, you're getting to explore a lot more of the history of that in this one. 
but for some reason it just didn't reach the heights of some of her previous books. One thing that I think Hobb excels in is character development and a lot of the development and the relationship building had already happened by the time we got to this book. A lot of the others were very character driven, very slow and I actually preferred that. I think some people maybe thought they were a bit slow, a bit boring but I love seeing the way she can change your mind about characters, how they can go from someone that you hate to someone that you absolutely love and unfortunately as I said that had already been established by the time we got to this book so it just I just missed that. Additionally the climax of this, the big scene, the part where they're defeating the big bad of this series and a lot of it happens off page and it was fine, that was her decision but I did feel that as a reader that was very underwhelming and I didn't get the satisfaction of seeing the bad guy suffer if that makes sense but I did still like it. I still love Robin Hobb. I still want everyone to read her books. If you're a huge fantasy lover, I think you need to get to them. Then we have a graphic novel, which is Rat Queen's Volume 1, Sass and Sorcery by Curtis J. Weeb. This is a fantasy graphic novel series following this group of boozy battle maidens for hire, who I think they get arrested at the beginning and they are forced to go on this quest to defeat something or whatever and this was exactly what I wanted. It was fun, it was bloody, it was gory and I'm really excited to continue in this graphic novel series. I rated it four stars. It wasn't my new favourite series ever but it was fun and I will definitely be continuing in that series soon. The next book I think is incredibly underrated because I really enjoyed this one. I gave it four stars and that is City of Circles by Jess Richards. This follows this girl called Danyu who is part of a traveller circus community and at the beginning of the book her parents die from this illness that she got originally so she feels a lot of guilt that she passed on to her parents and they passed away and she and her troop go to the city and it is this incredibly magical city. There's three different circles and the more affluent you are the more exclusive your circle is and this was just a beautifully told book. There is magic almost infused in every page even though you don't really get to see like magic much if that makes sense just the way it was written the way it was described was so whimsical so magical and this book is very much an exploration of grief and loneliness and some of the scenes in this really hit me because Danyu kind of goes off on her own into the city and she's like left behind she wants to be left behind because this was a place that her parents had been and she wants to connect with them. And this also had a few eerie elements. There were parts that were verging on horror. It wasn't really horror, but for example, the house that she occupies is a living thing. It has its own perspective and it does things to scare her away because it's this abandoned place and it holds on to its previous occupant that it really cared about and it doesn't want anyone else to move in and kind of disturb all the stuff that she's left so it moves stuff along the floor like a marble and I just loved that. It really added a whole new element to this story and again like I said it's that magic that is very subtle but there. I will say that this book is all vibes, no plot, but I ended up loving it for that. I think if you love The Night Circus, I think that you would really enjoy this. There are some circus scenes in the first part of the book and she goes on to do tightrope walking within the City of Circles. I would have liked to see a few more of her performances described but you do get that element if you're looking for something circus themed. But I just loved it and I think that it's very underhyped. I haven't really heard anyone else talk about this and 
I think it does have those vibes like The Night Circus, which is so popular, that I think a lot of readers will also really enjoy. Then we have my first 4.5 star of the month, and that is Your Silence Will Not Protect You by Audre Lorde. I want to be reading more of the fundamental feminist texts and um, texts about race, that kind of thing, to really broaden my understanding, and I think this was a really good place to start. This is a mix of Audre Lorde Lord's speeches, essays, some poetry. Audre Lorde's writing style is brilliant, it's poignant, there are some really impactful lines, and funnily enough I actually really enjoyed her poetry as well. As I was saying earlier, poetry isn't really my thing, but the use of language was just beautiful, and it ended up being a great read for me. I can't say I enjoyed it, it's talking about some really hard topics, but it was an important read for me, and I think that everyone should try it. And then my favourite book of the month was also a 4.5, and that was Strange Practice by Vivian Shaw. This was one of the first books that I read in the month, and I loved this one. This is the first book in the Dr. Greta Helsing trilogy, and it follows this woman called Greta Helsing who is the doctor for the supernatural creatures in London. So there is this whole supernatural underground, vampires, mummies, ghouls, anything you can think of, and she is the doctor. And at the beginning of this story one of these vampires goes to one of her friends who is also a vampire and he has been attacked. And there is this brotherhood of monks who are trying to kill like supernatural creatures, non-supernatural people, and it's a bit of a murder mystery, a bit thrilling, a bit horror, and a lot of fun. It was such a great take on the vampire mythology and other supernatural mythologies, and it reminded me a lot of Rivers of London by Ben Aronovich, which was actually a book that I didn't love. That has the same premise of a supernatural underground in London, but that one follows a detective. This one's following a doctor, obviously but I just think this one did it so much better. It had that mix of fun goofiness and then also really dark horrific things. There are a couple of body horror things in this, so if you are quite squeamish, maybe don't pick this up because there are certain things that the monks do to themselves that it's not nice to read about. Overall, this was so much fun. I'll definitely be reading the next books in this series. So those were all of my reads in April. I did say earlier that I took part in the Magical Readathon, so I thought I would quickly go through what career I picked and what books I read for what subject, if you're interested. So I ended up going for the Necromancer career. It was a toss-up between that and the Beastmaster because I have been reading a little bit less than I used to, so I wasn't sure if I'd be able to hit all the prompts, but I did. I am now a necromancer, and the prompts that I had to do were Animal Studies, which was a quick read, and I read Helium for that. I had to do Conjuration, which was a source of light on the cover, and I read Sleeping Giants. It had some stars. I did Demonology, which was a book with the word shadow in the title, and I read The Shadow Courtesan. For spells and incantations, you had to read a short story or an essay or an essay collection, short story collection, and I read Your Silence Will Not Protect You. For Inscription, you had to read an intimidating read, and I did Blood of Dragons, because I had been putting that one off for a few months. And then for Lore, you had to read a mythology-inspired book. I read Lovely War, because it had those Greek myth elements. For Restoration, I I had to read a book featuring healers and I read Strange Practice. And then finally for Shapeshifting I had to read a book with a creature with claws on the cover and I read Sass and Sorcery, Rat Queens Volume 1. There wasn't technically claws on the cover but there is some strange creature with big teeth and I'm just going to say that it probably does have claws and hopefully that is acceptable. But that is it that's all my prompts, that's all my books. These are all the books that I read during the month. Have you read any of these? Did you enjoy them or do you have a different opinion to me? And what was your favourite book from last month? But that's it from me today. Thank you for watching and to everyone out there, stay curious. Bye!